Jessica is a devoted mother of three. She gives her all for her children every day, and has for the past several years. Any parent will tell you that motherhood, especially, is no picnic. It's a full-time job with no vacations and no clocking out. No matter what you do, it takes a toll on you both mentally and physically. And Jessica is no exception. I have three children. I breastfed the three of them like for four years total. So my breasts weren't the same. She breastfed all three of her children, and with each one, the changes became more apparent. No longer as firm, no longer as full. Her clothes just didn't look as good anymore, and her self-esteem was also starting to sag. I was、uh, heavy after my pregnancies, and then I lost all the weight. Doesn't matter what I wear. Doesn't matter if the, I was a push-up. It just didn't look right. Her children were older now, and she was tired of feeling so down about her chest. So she decided to finally do something nice for herself. To take power into her own hands, and that's when she saw Dr. Markman on the Metamorphosis show. Yes, I've seen the show and I love it. So it wasn't too difficult to go with the doctor because then after I met him a couple of times, I was comfortable with him and he answered all of my questions and I trusted him to do the procedure on me. So we have a machine here called Vectra. Vectra is a 3D imaging system. It'll actually take six pictures of her body, all from the different directions at the same second. The computer put all those pictures back together into a 3D image. When the computer, it'll make her breast bigger with any implant size she wants to see. So we're going to show her all different sizes, from something real tiny to something real big, and she can pick which one she likes the best. So we're going to go see her, go through all the details about surgery, what she can do and can't do, and we will pick out what size implant she wants to get. She raises her arms up away from her sides. Right to there is good. Okay, hold real still so after you see a flash. This is you now. This is 510. This is 600. So looking at the front view, side view, major difference from where you're starting. No matter which、oh, one you、yeah. choose. Oh yeah, big difference. Yep. So you can see the difference between moderate profile and high profile. So you can see high profile sticks up to here, which you drew a line across is about that much different. What about the middle? What happens with the middle? So not. Really, not going to see much of a difference there. It's the same volume implant. Again, the implants can only come to where your muscle attachment is. So, if you want the smaller implant to be more like this, you go with a higher profile or more volume. It's going to be more like this.、So、the cleavage gets deeper, but it does not come any closer because your muscles don't move. Your muscle attachment there stays there. So, no matter how big you go, you're not going to get closer together. Right. You just go from flat to more projecting. You can always put a push-up bra and push them together. Right. But the implant themselves are limited by where your muscle attachment is. I was not rushed to make any decision.、Uh, they ask you、um, what are your expectations, and they follow、um, a protocol to make you decide, you know, whatever you're looking for. But they have, you know, there's the steps that you have to follow through. You're not rushed into make a decision. Next, we're going to go see Jessica. Jessica's here for her one-month follow-up after getting breast implants, so we're going to check and see how she's doing. It's a different feeling just looking yourself in the mirror. You know, I don't. I'm, I'm not. You know, it's winter, so you're not dressing up too much. I mean, it's sweatpants and whatever. But、um, even with that, it makes a difference. So they're nice and mobile, which is good. But you're, you don't see as much skin down here as you should.、Mm -hmm. Like to see it more like that. So as the implant comes down, your nipple moves up. Okay. Okay. 
So then your scar right now is kind of almost in the crease. What you get is a sign the implant moved up, your scar moves down. So the scar should be about a centimeter above the crease. So right now it's really pretty much in the crease there. So you're doing silicone sheeting on there, which is good. Mm -hmm. Definitely keep doing that and definitely keep massaging. You really want to squeeze them down like that. Okay, okay. so move them around together, move them up, give them a little squeeze apart. Okay. But the most important one is going to be to squeeze them down as hard as you can. I can now wait until summer so I can wear my stuff, you know, and go shopping again. They're, they're great. One of the most common complications with breast implants is they want to move up. We do everything we can to keep them down where they belong. So hers have moved up just a little bit. Definitely want to see them come back down and now it's the best time to get them back down. So we're going to put her back into her special strap called a bando. She stopped wearing that a week or so ago. We're going to get her back into that and hopefully get these implants to move back down exactly where they belong. So. If they stay where they are, she's going to look great, but she'll look even better if they get back where they, sh where they should be. So, we will see her back in again in a couple weeks. Walking a mile in her patient shoes is something that all of my own clients do. Is good. It's Brittany from Metamorphosis, the nurse practitioner. So today we're going to be doing dermal filler to one of our patients. So we're going to be augmenting the cheeks, just restoring a little bit of the volume. We start losing volume at around age like 30 in the face, which is very depressing. So we're going to put a little bit to restore the volume to help her look a little bit more refreshed. And we're actually going to augment the chin a little bit just to balance her profile. It's all about balancing it to create the beauty. So come on in and come join me. This is our lovely patient. She is numbing. She's been numbing for about 30 minutes now. Um, so we're just trying to make the injections just a little bit more comfortable. How are you feeling? You good? <laughs> all right. I did, I brought you two different types of fillers. We're gonna do the same one, which is the Restylane, the Lift in the cheeks it's just nice it's a little bit more robust and just gives a little bit more of a pop um the, what we can start thinking about if you like the the cheeks a little bit more defined we can start to think about using restylane which lasts a little bit longer and gives a little bit more pop and then the other option is bellafil which is the five-year filler so that you don't have to keep coming back but i know we're just kind of stepping into this yeah. slowly so we can just there's a lot of options and then I'm gonna use define in the chin area and this I love in the chin because it's soft so it's not gonna be like too crazy too fake looking or anything but it helps give some structure and it also has a smile technology and you move a lot with your chin so it's supposed to be a little bit more malleable so with the chin you can bruise a little bit more it's pretty vascular and I have to go down to like the bone and sometimes you know it's a needle going into the face. I don't like to use cannula in this area which sometimes I do use to minimize bruising but in this area I don't like cannula because it's just not as precise. It's it's not the best. So so our patient came in about about a month ago maybe two weeks two weeks to a month and we did a little bit of cheek injections with dermal filler and the whole reason she wanted to start doing the filler was because she started to notice the smile lines and that's where most people i would say like 50 percent of my patients that's one of their first complaints is the smile lines you see it pretty early on around your 30s so what the cor the correct way to fill the face to make it look the most natural is to restore the volume that you lost prior and that's the reason you get these. So we gave her a little bit of cheek augmenting up in the upper cheek and that also just balances her whole face which is so nice. Everyone loves like a little pop of the cheekbone. Um, and so she actually loved it about two to three days later when it was still a little swollen. So we met and we we're like, you know, maybe we'll just add one more syringe to give it the look where it was like a little bit more swollen just to give a little bit more pop. Um, and what it helps, it helps again define the cheeks and then it helps lift the face as well to help minimize the smile line, which is also known as the nasolabial lines. 
And then a big thing that I'm really passionate about is balancing facial structures and profiles. And so she does, um, she could just use a little bit more projection of the chin to help just enhance the profile. I mean, she's beautiful. She doesn't need a lot of help. We're just doing a little here and there for anti-aging as well. <laughs> So I'm just feeling around for my anatomy right now. Lines. Go ahead and poke. That hurt really bad? Mm -mm. Your eyes got really big. So we just finished the injections. It went very well. Um, as you can see, she looks beautiful, a little enhanced. Right now she's a little swollen, a little bit, you know, a little blood here and there, but honestly, very comfortable, very minimally invasive. Um, and she's good to go today to do whatever she wants. Uh, just the only post instructions. I try to have her sleep on her back with about two pillows just to help with the swelling. And it's, it is malleable to moldable, so you don't wanna smush it the first 24 hours. Um, I also tell my patients, try not to work out for the first 24 hours, just again, for swelling reasons. If she bruises, uh, she can use some Arnica every four hours, lightly just massaging it in the area of the bruise. Doesn't look like she's gonna bruise at all today. So she'll wake up just a little sore. She'll know that she had something done, but nobody else will, and that's it. And then she can wear a mask if she bruises, so it's perfect. <laughs>
Unlike some, her insecurities did not fade with age, and her small breasts continued to make her feel less of a woman. Now an adult, she finally decided to do something about it and began researching her options. It's been a couple of years that I've actually been looking into it, probably about one to two years. Time finally came where I'm like, okay, that's it. I'm gonna do this. I am tired of not having clothes fit me very well and not feeling very womanly. I'm just gonna do it. After extensive research, she still had so many questions. So she found a local doctor and made an appointment. So I actually went to a doctor in Virginia who had a lot of really great reviews, um, very well known, and I had my consult with him. In talking to him, he just wasn't very personable. He wasn't very friendly. And when I told him about how I wanted it, because I thought I'd done all the research, uh, I said that I wanted it over the muscle and uh, to just really cut down on my recovery time because I didn't want to take that time off. And he just didn't say anything. He was just like, yep, got it, good. Sign these papers and we'll get you taken care of. And I thought, oh, great. She was excited after the visit and knew she wanted to get surgery, but something didn't feel right about that interaction. Almost as if by fate, she saw the Metamorphosis show and discovered Dr. Markman. I actually started following Metamorphosis and they were almost two hours from me, but I was like, you know what, let me just make that drive. I talked to Dr. Markman immediately when he came in. He just had a really great, like, fun personality, was very much more engaged. Um, he was a little bit more interested as me as a person, so I really, really appreciated that. And when I told him, hey, I want the implant over the muscle, he, like, basically told me no. <laughs> He's like, we just don't do that. And I was a little taken aback at first, but as he began to explain that long term it's better and that it's a lot safer and that, you know, it minimizes any issues and me being a small size, I mean, I was an A, uh, it would allow no rippling. So I'd have this really nice natural result and that's really what I wanted. It was kind of a no brainer to have a doctor really sit there and educate me and, and tell me, you know, I understand what you want, but I'm telling you what's best. I was like, there's, there's no way I'm not going with this great place. Katie next. Katie is here for her three month follow up after having breast augmentation. Um, so this was back before Corona hit. So this is her first visit here. Um, well, since we closed down for Corona, this is her first visit back with us. So she's three months post-op, so we're gonna go check out and see how she's doing. So everything's going well? Any problems, any pains? No, everything feels pretty normal. Um, Good. Happy with how, how soft they are. They definitely fluffed, I, I guess is what the term is. Yep. Yeah. Um, a lot more than I thought they would, and I'm really happy about well, that. That's good. Really good. grateful. So you're happy with your size? Very happy with the size and the shape. I think the shape's a lot better good. than it was before, too. The results are way better than anything else I could have imagined. So just the boost to my self-confidence uh, is just indescribable. Also, the office staff was really nice. Um, Grace is really, really cool.
fat, it loves to hang around exactly where we don't want it. Rebecca had worked hard to lose weight, but just couldn't get rid of the excess fat around her neck. So she finally decided to do something about it. I've always had a very big chin, um, so that's what prompted that phone call to try to figure out whether I needed a lift or liposuction or something. I didn't exactly know what I needed. While I was interviewing surgeons, it was during Corona, so we were all working from home, and I'm working at one end of the island interviewing surgeons, and my husband's working at the other end of the island, and he's like, oh, well, while you're doing that, why don't you just get breast implants? Like, while you're at the grocery store, why don't you just pick up an extra gallon of milk? I researched a bunch of different surgeons during Corona. I did a lot of uh, teleconferences. The other doctors suggested a breast lift, and Dr. Markman said that I didn't need one. In my mind, I, I felt that it was very honest of him because why not make the extra five grand if you can. I really liked how he presented everything and how he explained everything, but I really loved that he was honest in reference to the procedures that I did and did not need. So we have a machine here called Vectra. Vectra is a 3D imaging system. It'll actually take six pictures of our body all from the different directions at the same second. The computer put all those pictures back together into a 3D image. When the computer, it'll make her breast bigger with any implant size she wants to see. So we're gonna show her all different sizes from something real tiny to something real big, and she can pick which one she likes the best. So we're gonna go see her, go through all the details about surgery, what she can do and can't do, and we will pick out what size implant she wants to get. The vector machine was awesome. You stood there. The pictures are so accurate. I showed them to everybody. None of the other doctors discussed that, which is also part of uh, one of the reasons why I really like Dr. Markman. I'd never broken a bone. I'd never been in the hospital. Like, so this was terrifying for me. Dr. Markman came in and spoke to me prior to the operating room for a little bit. It was just wonderful. He made me very, very comfortable. I was very comfortable, the hospital was great. I even had this like little skin tag forming under my eye and before the surgery I was like, hey, can you just get that off? And he did. Rebecca's here for a two month follow-up after getting breast implants. So we're gonna go check her out and see how everything's going. Yes. So you're about two months now since surgery? Yes. You're happy with the size? Very happy, everything's settled. Settling, everything. softening up? Mm -hmm. Good. Any problems with your scars? Nope, yeah. they're okay. healing really well. Okay. In reference to the before and after pictures, I am extremely impressed, um, especially when it came to my neck. Like I was consistently taking pictures throughout the healing process and comparing them side by side, and it is such a drastic change. I never realized how how much happier I would have been with larger breasts. Like I just never thought about it, but I I love it. It's just given me a lot more confidence, and I feel happier about myself. Walking around 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 For a lot of guys, it seems like no matter how much time they spend in the gym, they just can't get the tone and definition they're after. Vinny is one of those guys. I mean, I work out, I've been working out for 16, 17 years, but I could never get rid of that, uh, the subcutaneous fat. He did everything he could to get rid of his stubborn fat, but it just wasn't going anywhere. So Vinny decided to take a different approach. It's really frustrating, you know, no matter how much I worked, like, you know, uh, eating salads and working, you know, uh, working out, cardio, nothing seemed to work, you know? Like, I just couldn't get rid of that fat here in the abdomen region. Oh, I did a lot of research online and uh, uh, we needed lipo. I mean, it's, uh, there is no substitute for that, you know? There was one doctor in Manhattan and one, and then Dr. Markman. Dr. Markman is uh, really good at what he does, you know? He, he specializes in the six-pack abs and a lot of people all over the world actually come to him, so that's the reason I you know, went over. I had to come all the way to New Jersey. He told me exactly what he would do, and uh, you know, 
and I got whatever he told me. And uh, he told me it's not, it's not gonna be, it'll be painless. going to a dentist you know this was zero pain I was amazed I was like wow so next is Vinny we're gonna go see Vinny for his three-month follow-up after doing some liposuction for a six-pack for six-pack etching so we'll see how he's coming along so no lumps anywhere no fluid collections anywhere anything of any concern yeah. no so your scars themselves are very very minimal just irritated from the cream you've been doing so we did some liposuction up here to enhance your pec muscles we did your rib cuts here and then your six pack, and that all looks awesome. Let me see from the back. So back in here we did some love handles, which looks good too, so there's no fluid, any any lumps or any pains anywhere? No. Nothing? Good. Okay. Well you look amazing. Great. So, so six pack forever. <laughs> yep. I mean now I can walk shirtless anywhere I want. I have six pack abs. <laughs> this is amazing. I feel so confident and I'm so happy, you know. It's unbelievable. I mean I recommend everyone to at least try this. It's truly amazing.